And we'll move straight into presentations. Uh, Mr. Philip Cooper, Communication Manager, to provide a presentation regarding information on current approaches in place to assist the public in receiving information from the city, as well as emerging trends for receiving information from the community. Mr. Cooper. So this evening, I'm going to provide an update on communications here at the City of Nanaimo. And before you is the first slide in the presentation contains the highlights that I'll be going through. So we'll talk about the function, the types of communications, announcements, social media, our website, advertising, marketing, internal communications, and a pretty significant emerging trend that I want to quickly touch base on. So the first slide will just kind of remind everyone where the communication function resides within the city of Nanaimo. It reports uh, to the city manager and it's located within the office of the city manager. Uh, this alignment is a result of the organizational change that took place last fall. The next slide provides a quick snapshot of, of the actual function itself. So it's made up of two positions uh, along with the manager, so for a total of three. It too is a result of the organizational change that took place last fall. Uh, before that event, uh, these three positions were somewhat uh, independent of one another. Uh, there was a, an oversight capacity, but they weren't coordinated and managed together. So one of the outcomes of the organizational change from 2013 was to bring them together. They are distributed, though, in different places across the organization. So why they, why they have a, uh, a centralized management function, they, they are distributed independently, and that provides them an opportunity to reach out to individual departments uh, where the best and, and biggest business opportunities are. They do, however, provide support to the entire organization. And these are some of the things that they, they will look at. Uh, advertising, backgrounders, web design, reports, posters, there's an entire range of services that those three positions support. Now, when we talk about communications, there are, there are sort of two perspectives that you can look at. Uh, the one we hear about the most has a high proportion of emphasis on issues-based communications. And there's also political communications and emergency communications. And then intermixed amongst that, you also have operational communications. And that's the day-to-day -day business that occurs throughout the city. And this is often the perception. By volume, this is generally how it looks. The operational component of what happens daily is a huge part of, of what happens here at the city of Nanaimo. And there are a number, uh, hundreds of transactions that occur every day to which is a communication component. And that's really where the bulk of the work lies. And when you get that balance incorrect, uh, or you have a, a downshift in your attention on the communication function in general with respect to operations, that's where your issues begin to emerge. So it's always very important to make sure that you're looking closely at your operational day-to-day -day communication effects because that's where the ability to look forward and, and predict what is going to occur and make sure that it's managed accordingly. To oversee the operational side of our business, we do have the communication plan that was launched uh, last July of 2013. It contains a total of 61 actions and emphasizes external, internal, public participation and relationship building. Uh, as you will recall, it's a living document, which means it can be updated at any time. And it's based on four guiding principles. Uh, the first one is taking responsibility. This really emphasizes that the communication role is something that all staff have a role to play in. It is something that we all have a responsibility for. Uh, informing residents is obviously extremely important in terms of what the plan sets out. It also supports active listening. Uh, citizens wish to be heard and they need to have information that's acknowledged their input. And finally, measuring and improving. Uh, communications is like anything. You have to measure it to determine how you're being successful and the kind of feedback that you're receiving. So with the respect to measurement, I took a quick snapshot of the period of June through September over the years 2012, 2013, and 2014. I began with 2012. Uh, that's the year that I started. And these are to do with news releases and the output that's being created by them. So in 2012 and 2013, you were averaging over that uh, period of time, 35 to 38 news releases. And then in 2014, 
we've boosted that up to 74. Now when we talk about news releases in general, you also want to consider the diversity of them. So these next three slides focus on the month of June. June is often a very busy month for announcements. And what you can see here is there were a total of uh, eight news releases issued in the June 2012, and the diversity is across three individual departments, with parks, rec, and environment being the majority of the announcements. If you switch to June 2013, you can see that the, the number output has gone from eight to 10, but the diversity is much more um, spread out. You have a total of, of six departments now participating in, in the process itself. And then for June 2014, you have a total of 23 announcements made, and the diversity is over seven departments. So a lot more groups are participating in getting information out the door and talking about things that are important to the city. This is the same representation put in a different format to demonstrate uh, what's happening with respect to the diversity of news releases. So what are some of the factors leading to that? Well, first of all, we have the launch of the city's communication plan. As I talked about earlier, you have the alignment of the communication function under the city manager. You have the creation of the uh, coordinated team. But in, an important part of that is also the uh, access to meetings. Uh, you can only be as effective in, in terms of preparing for information opportunities by the access you have to key meetings. So the access is, is, is much improved in terms of, of where we can go to learn and what we can learn about. There's also been an improvement on news awareness, uh, that sort of savviness of what's news and what isn't, and, and creating opportunities, providing information, sharing information around what's coming up as a possible announcement. And then finally, I want to talk about the news release creator. This is an application that was uh, launched in March of this year. Uh, it was built by our IT department. And it has done a fantastic job of bringing together a number of previously independent functions and putting them into a single application that makes writing news releases extremely easy and straightforward. It also standardizes the writing process, the format, and the approval process. And then it integrates everything. Uh, it integrates it with the city's network, the website, and our Twitter account. So this is a fantastic resource. Uh, we're, we're pretty, um, I'm pretty proud to have been a part of the creation of it, and I think we're getting some great results as a result of it being uh, put in place. And hats off to our IT department for helping this vision become a reality. Moving on to our social media, there's lots of talk about social media. Well, what does that look like here at the city of Nanaimo? Well, we have a single account, which is probably the preferred path. It creates a single gateway where you can reach out uh, to the city via Twitter, as well as putting out information on behalf of the city. We currently have uh, 8,260 followers. We have a growth rate of about 20 followers per week. And in addition to the official city account, we also have specialized accounts for fire and RCMP. Uh, the RCMP account is, is a great resource, particularly when you have a situation locally where there's a lot of attention on a police function. And that account just lights up with activity and information being shared. Same goes with our fire account. I wanted to kind of paint a picture of where we sit with respect to Twitter compared to other cities across Canada within that 80,000 to 100,000 population range. So you can see Lethbridge is coming in strong at 14,000 followers, and then the Nanaimo finds itself in second place with our, with our number of 8,260, and then it moves down the list. If you compare Nanaimo to other public sector organizations, uh, we're doing quite well. Uh, BC Ferries obviously has a massive lead, but we're by those numbers in second place uh, with other groups uh, coming in behind us. And then finally, and this one's kind of interesting, uh, although we're not necessarily in the news business, uh, we do very well in terms of having people wanting to pay attention to our account and receive information from the city. So these are all of our local news suppliers here in Nanaimo. And as you can see, that we're, we've got the biggest followership of the lot. We also have our Facebook account. There's 5,561 likes. That's the equivalent of a follower. Uh, Facebook is used to discuss a number of, of items and announcements. There's a huge emphasis on parks, recreation, and environment. It's one of the key marketing tools that they use to get the word out on what's taking place within those services. 
And we, we generally try and respond to inquiries within a business day. That, that's sort of the standard we aim for. Sometimes it's not always possible, that, but that's generally what we're aiming for. In addition to Facebook, we also have a YouTube account. Currently, there are 58 videos on that, that service. Uh, they're typically anywhere from four to, four to three minutes in length. Uh, they have a range of topics included. And we're looking at expanding our video library by building on how-to videos. And I'll kind of touch base on that later in the presentation. I want to quickly touch base now on our website. Uh, we're currently in the process of reviewing it. One of the things that's becoming um, a bit of a concern is the, the type of access that's occurring on websites in general. And, and what we're finding here in Nanaimo is half of the visitors are accessing it via mobile phones. And when the website was created some years ago, that wasn't the case. So it doesn't really have the same type of uh, interface and experience a, a, as it ought to when you're looking at 50% of your users coming at it from a mobile phone. So we need to kind of improve on that. And the other thing that we've found is the type of search uh, capabilities that it has aren't as, as good as they could be. So we want to improve on the search features. So currently, we just completed a uh, review of the current um, content, and there were a number of recommendations that came back on how content could be improved. Uh, the next step is to rewrite that content, reorganize it, make it easier and faster to locate. Uh, following that, there'll be the introduction of a new content management system. Uh, this is important because the current content management system, and that's sort of your back-end operation of the website, has some limitations in terms of what we can change on the actual site. So a new content management system will give us full control over the site. Um, it won't be limited by uh, proprietary coding uh, that, uh, that doesn't allow us to change the whole thing. And then finally, and this is typically what you expect with a new website, you have kind of a redesign of the fit and finish graphics and menus. So that's kind of a quick summary of the sorts of things that would improve at the end of that project. So mobile friendly, better quality of writing, refresh navigation, and a couple of other items as well. We also have a, an important need to look at internally how we do communications. And as you may recall, one of the uh, principles of the communication plan focuses on internal communications. And the ability to share information internally is one of the ways you can get yourself ready for external communications. So these are things which I think everyone here will be familiar with. Uh, we have up, up, up activity updates. These are distributed weekly to provide certainly council and management with information on what's taking place across the organization. Uh, every news release that goes out provides a notification that that's about to occur. And it gives people a sense of what's happening in other parts of the organization before that information is released. And then every week we provide a, a summary of what's been uh, talked about or what's been reported on the city in terms of, its, uh, of the news and announcements that are taking place. We do a lot of advertising here at the City of Nanaimo. Uh, there are a number of different methods by which advertising uh, is done, but for the most part it focuses on print, radio, and video. Uh, there are legislative requirements that cities here in, in Canada have to observe. Uh, the community charter requires that uh, a lot of our development permits uh, and development changes all be uh, advertised in the newspaper in particular as a way to notify the public. So when you look at the, the amount of money we're spending, quite often that's to do with legislative requirements. Uh, in addition to advertising, we also have a news pickup. So most of our major announcements, uh, if we don't advertise, they do get picked up through our local media. These numbers here provide you a bit of a breakdown on terms of uh, who the local vendors are for advertising uh, purchasing. So you can see that Nanaimo Daily News uh, takes the, the majority of the advertising dollars from the city, followed by the Nanaimo News Bulletin. And we do a little bit in the radio as well. The approach that we take to advertising is decentralized. Every department uh, determines where their business needs are. And they then book and coordinate those ads accordingly. Uh, one of the downsides to that approach is you do have variation of, of print design and print layout. You don't have a consistent fit and finish. That's something we probably want to look at changing going forward. We have standardized our radio advertising approaches. So when you listen to a city radio ad, it does have a common sound bed, so you can tell it's coming from the city. And the video formats also vary. So that might be something we want to take a look at going forward. 
Uh, some of the things I would suggest we would uh, be a bit more conscious of going forward is greater use of radio. Uh, when you look at those numbers we had up earlier, uh, I, I don't think radio gets uh, as much of that pie as it ought to. I think radio is a, a fantastic resource and it's something that we, I would certainly encourage using more of. Um, this has come up before. Um, probably a wise thing to take advantage of some of the uh, free advertising uh, distribution opportunities. Not free in the sense that you're, um, you're getting your ad for free, but you're getting free distribution. And, and the Thursday paper put out by the Nanaimo Daily News is one that I would encourage us all to try and put as much copy into as possible when advertising, because that goes to every household in the into the community. Uh, the bulletin also goes to every household in the community. So try and get people better organized and, and more uh, um, ready to make their, their advertisings uh, in that particular publication. Um, we don't have a city uh, newsletter uh, that they typically operate by direct mail. And that's a great way to uh, connect with your residents. Um, and provide them information that they may be wanting to learn about or direct them to other sources of information, perhaps on the city website. So that could be something we want to look at going forward. The regional district does do one. I have a picture of their newsletter there, and I think it does a great job of touching on some of the key updates that that organization does on a, on a certainly or an annual basis. I think they do theirs three times a year. The other area which is uh, important is YouTube. YouTube's a fantastic resource for putting out information. Um, if presented with a video and say 500 words of text, a lot of people would, might actually choose to watch the video than read something. And we just recently completed a film shoot last Friday creating a video for how to go about getting a city permit to build something on your property. And it kind of reduces all the steps into about four minutes of video to give people an idea of how you can move through that process more effectively. So expect to see more of those as we move forward. Lots of printed marketing materials. A lot of this is done in support of parks, recreation, and environment. Uh, we also do them for recycling as well. So these are big colorful brochures that are designed to get people's attention and provide them with, with as much information on those services as possible. Uh, the activity guide is unique in the sense that the cost to print it are recovered through the advertising that is put in that publication. So a number of pages are reserved for local organizations and businesses to advertise in. Reports and plans are also done uh, on a regular basis. And at this point, I want to draw your attention to, uh, I guess, one and two. A lot of what I've been talking about to date falls under the realm of uh, communication and, and to some degree listening to our residents. And this is a spectrum that you've probably seen before. It's put out by the International Association of Public Participation. And it's a way to discuss uh, what the different steps are for creating a strong participation element with your, with your local population. And there's an upcoming trend that I want to sort of conclude on that, that sort of is worth noting. And I know it's something that uh, we, we probably haven't talked about in the past, but it's worth bringing up. In fact, there's a report coming before you, I believe it's the next council meeting, which puts this particular um, idea into a broader concept of public engagement in general. Um, what I'm going to talk about right now is a specific tool of public engagement that we might want to take a look at. So as you're all aware, public engagement as a whole has a number of challenges. There is certainly a fair amount of skepticism, low trust, and to some degree inconvenience with doing public engagement. Uh, and as an organization, uh, doing effective public engagement can sometimes involve uh, resources, be that staffing or, or, or money, that uh, are, are hard to come by. Uh, you have a lot of high expectations, certainly from the community. And there's often a lack of, lack of common ground. So one of the things that, that's becoming quite popular are the creation of online community panels. And these are basically a way of bringing a lot of residents together from a lot of different backgrounds and giving them uh, challenges or, or, or surveys or opportunities to provide input. Um, they're generally seen as a secure environment where they can participate. And it's also a great way for them to provide input on a wide range of, of topics. Uh, they work by simply inviting as many people as possible to, uh, to join up on these panels. And anyone can participate. Um, they are open to all ages, cultures, backgrounds, all viewpoints. Uh, anyone who has something to say or share 
is certainly welcome to be a part of these. And who's doing these? Uh, these are becoming very popular. Um, I think the initial uh, wave began down in the United States uh, a couple years ago. And here in Canada, Surrey, Vancouver, West Vancouver, Edmonton, Burlington, just to name a few, have all invested a fair amount of energy and, and creative thinking around building these panels. And they're, they're, getting, they're getting some success. They're certainly getting some news. Uh, the communication plan that we launched last year does reference this idea, but it isn't something that we've actually acted on yet. So I just wanted to kind of flag this style of engagement resource as something that uh, we should probably take a look at moving forward, because I think there's a lot of value in studying it and getting a sense of uh, whether these sorts of panels are a good fit for Nanaimo. What they provide is a lot of data, uh, both qualitative and quantitative, segmented, verified, fast and secure. So there are certainly challenges with some of our uh, legislative uh, requirements that have come forward in the last year with respect to privacy. Uh, the examples of the cities I, I showed you a moment ago have come up with solutions to address that. So there's certainly a lot of attention being paid to make these work within the current legislative environment, as well as making them work in terms of the kind of value they can provide back uh, to organizations like ours. And those are some of the things that they typically can do for you. So you can engage lots of people, you can satisfy the desire to be heard, uh, you can diversify the input, and, and that's really important. And we, we often face the challenge of, of hearing lots of information on a lot of different topics, but the diversity of where that information is coming from isn't ideal. So these panels are being designed to try and improve on that. Uh, they create better debate, and finally they can lead to more informed decision making. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions.